I'm going to talk about uh, what we're doing in southern Norway, and we're quite uh, pleased with that other people are noticing that we're trying to change the role of a DMO. Going from the traditional marketing organization towards a new way of working with the industry. And it started in 2010 when I was hired to uh, form the company of Visit Southern Norway, Visit Sørland it's called. Let's see if I can get this working. Ah. Here it is. I don't know if you know Norway very well, but if you've seen any impressions of Norway, it would probably be something like this. This is the fjords of Norway, really, really beautiful. And I'm thinking when uh, Kieran was on last uh, yesterday and he showed the pictures from uh, Ireland, I said, well, I wouldn't go to Ireland to see nature. I would go there to drink. I would say Norway to see nature. So this is like Norway. And the other one is, um, OK. Uh, Northern Lights. Those are the two images of no Norway. But then, okay, this is a very active. Uh, this is us. This is Southern Norway. We don't have fjords. We don't have Northern Lights. We don't have Midnight Sun. We're not part of the Norwegian image out there. We're, a, we're like the Norwegian Riviera. People go for a summer holiday to Southern Norway. So we're not part of the communication as a uh, and the international communication of Norway as a destination. And all the money, on uh, all the budgets in Norway, they go to promote uh, the fjords and the north of Norway. There's nothing left for us in the south. I need to be more friends with this one. Let's see. So that was our starting point in 2010. We didn't really have any budget. Um, everything was focused on... Um, on the northern part of Norway and western part of Norway. And uh, the, the southern part of Norway mainly works with a domestic market. We are really good on that. But we needed to turn things around because we didn't have much money. And I've heard the discussions going here that we don't have the budgets and all of that. To be honest, I'm quite happy we didn't have the budgets because then we had to start to think a smart way. We needed to do the right stuff because we didn't have money. So we wanted to, um, to change the way we were working. And instead of always focusing on the customers and potential customers of Southern Norway, we said we need to focus on of, of the people who's already here, that already love us. Because we have some uh, quite uh, big fans of Southern Norway. They come on holiday every year, and they really love Southern Norway. So instead of always focusing our marketing activities towards the, those who doesn't know of us, we, we said we need to take a step back and go back to the basic and focus on all the visitors that's already here and think of them as our marketeers. I don't think this is like rocket science for you guys, but in 2010, that was uh, a really huge step in Norway because all DMOs were focusing on getting new customers. That's where they put all their money. But we decided instead of doing that, we would work with the ones already here, the one that already loves us. They are the best marketeers for our region. And you see that girl there? She's wearing kind of a pirate costume. Uh, in Norway, uh, in my part of Norway, we have uh, one theme park, it's really huge. They have like one million annual visitors every year. Being in Norway, that's quite big. There's five million people living in Norway. So one in five will go to southern Norway to visit this theme park. And it's also like, if you haven't, haven't brought your kids to uh, the theme park, it's child protective services will come and knock on your door. It's like mandatory. It's, it's much more than just Disneyland. So we wanted to start with that. And our vision that was made, actually, it wasn't, I, I wasn't the one who came up with this. It was the industry that came up with this. They said, we want to be the number one destination in getting our customers to come back, our visitors. So that's our vision, and it's been for four years. We want to be number one on getting our customers to come back. And the goal was that nine out of 10 will return and they will tell others. Because if you, want, if you like a place so much that you want to come back, you won't keep it a secret, you will tell others. So that's the marketing in this. So if I like Nashville, which I do very much, I wouldn't keep it a secret. I would tell everybody. It doesn't mean that I will come back here every year because I don't have the money for that, but I will be Nashville's ambassador. That's what I'm going to be. And the same thing is working in southern Norway. It is like you love Solana so much 
that you want to come back and then you will tell others because we don't keep it a secret anymore if you like a place. So this is our vision and goal. Nine out of 10 will return and tell others. It's quite easy when it's put up there, but how do you do that? First and foremost, we, we saw that's nothing, it doesn't happen in the DMO. It's not Visit Sörland and my organization. We cannot make that happen. It has to happen where the action's going on, and that's out in the industry. That's when the visitor meets the receptionist at the hotel, or they attend an activity, or whatever they're doing, taking the taxi, for instance, that's where the magic's happening, not in the DMO. So we can't really buy our way into this vision. It needs to be in the industry. It needs to be out in the destination. And we kind of said, well, in the old days, it was the one with the biggest budgets that won the marketing competition. They were the one having the success. Bought and paid for advertisement was kind of what all of us were doing, and some of us were doing it really well, others not. But the biggest budgets, they won. Doesn't look really good here. But we're saying, well, things have changed. So the biggest budgets are not the winners anymore. It's the one that's best in show. It's actually the one that are doing the job, giving the goods to the visitors, giving the great, ex um, remarkable experiences. They are the one winning. So we're thinking the shift is going now from the bought and paid for advertisement to the honest and the served marketing. So that's where we want to work. And that's where the stories are. Doesn't look really good here, but you all know where the stories are told. Uh, so for us, it was important to get the stories out there. Because we knew we had all these very satisfied visitors in southern Norway. But in 2010, when I did a survey to check what, what are people talking about us, what are they saying, we knew they were coming back and they were really happy. But there were no stories out there. There was nothing on digital. And I, I checked like TripAdvisor and the biggest amusement park with one million uh, annual visitors. They were on TripAdvisor. I don't think they knew it themselves that they were on there. And the biggest surprise was they weren't ranked as the number one attraction in southern Norway. They were ranked as number two. The number one attraction was a church that I never visit. And I'm thinking, is it really open for, for public to come in at all? And the reason why the, the church was number one, it was because they had two reviews on TripAdvisor. And the amusement park had one. That was in 2010. I don't know how you're working with your industry, but we very soon discovered that the industry doesn't really know where the stories are being told, and they don't even know where they're supposed to be and where they need to have a presence. Uh, and TripAdvisor, for us, is, we reckon that to be one of the most important channels for us because that's, if, you, if you're going to go to Norway for the first time, you would probably not visit our web page. You would go on TripAdvisor or you would use booking.com or something like that. So we needed to kind of get a picture of all the different platforms where the industry needed to be present and they needed to perform well. Oops. I think I am the first one that has problem with this one, but I blame it on last night. <laughs> so, the industry in southern Norway, they took an initiative to start a network. And I can't take credit for starting the network, but I can take credit for being part of running it and building it up. But it's quite easy. When you want to get the industry on board, you need to speak a language they understand. And I think Jordi last night, he was, um, was quite, um, or not last night, yesterday on the daytime, he was quite uh, forward. Uh, and he, he was quite clear on what he needed and also about not knowing what he needs all the time. But this is something we see that the industry in Southern Norway really understand. It will cost you five times more to get a new customer than to really work on the one you already have. That's money in the bank. And if you don't have much money, it's even easier to understand. So it's uh, cost effective to actually focus on the customers you already have instead of trying to build new relations. So we worked up the network based on that. From the, uh, the initiative actually came from the amusement park, because they're like huge.
but they saw even though we're doing a great job in our park, everybody's satisfied, they want to come back, and it's on the, like the mandatory, mandatory thing you do with your family, doesn't really help us if the hotel across the street or the restaurant in the town doesn't deliver the goods. Because when people are on holiday, they will kind of see the whole picture. They will say, well, the park was OK, but the restaurant sucked. So we don't like that destination. So they kind of said, we need everybody on board on thinking in the same direction. And that's when uh, the USUS project, it's a really strange name, it's Latin, but it actually means working together, sharing knowledge. That initiative came about. And it's a network of businesses um, that, are, that want to work together and that believe that existing customers are more important to focus on than always trying to, to get the new one that doesn't know about you. Uh, and um, the thing about the network is um, we started out with 15 businesses, not very much, but we needed a small group to kind of set the standard of what do we really need to uh, achieve getting 9 out of 10 coming back and telling others. Uh, and it was important to have the short-term results, because if you're in, in the industry, you're not very interested in waiting 10 years to see the results of activity you join. So it was very important for us to have a, a program that uh, secured short-term results at the same time as we could work long-time strategic. So that's what we tried to do, that uh, we have came up with different um, activities that industry said, we need help with this, can you provide and help us with that? And the digital came up very, very quickly. First and foremost, because I told the industry, where are you on TripAdvisor? I can't see you here. And did you know that your competitor uh, has actually taken ownership over your business on Google Plus? And they were like, what? Google Plus, what's that? Uh, so we, <laughs> like Jordi said, doesn't already know what you need, but our job was then to tell them what you actually need to be doing. Uh, now, uh, in 2014, there are 100 businesses part of the network. So we have every year increased uh, the membership or the, the volume of businesses because there's no point of being 15 businesses being really good on getting the customers to come back and the rest being shit. So um, it's, it's always been like we need more on board. Uh, but the funny thing is that when we normally when we have a marketing campaign and stuff There's always this uh, competitiveness between the industries about who's going to be on the front page of the brochure or top of the list on your web page or whatever um, This uh, network is not based on marketing. It's based on sharing experiences and uh, how to improve uh, your um, um, how to improve your business towards getting the customers to wanting to come back. So that means that the businesses that join the network, they're not competing. They're actually sitting around the same table, sharing their knowledge on, this is the way we do it. Uh, oh, how do you do that? Can, you, can we kind of uh, switch information? Can we learn from each other? And if we see, well, we have a joint problem, we have a problem with getting um, our chefs doing a good job, maybe we can work together on, on improving that. So um, one of the, um, the businesses also said, she'd been part of a lot of networks, marketing campaigns and stuff, and she said, this is the first network that I've been in that I actually feel that um, I can share all my, my successes, but also my failures, and I can learn from the others on how to improve. Okay. <laughs> God. This is like the old lady trying the <laughs> very fancy technology. How's that doing? Is it just me, or do I have to point towards you and you will do stuff there? <laughs> okay, here it is. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. It's very professional. Um, <laughs> this is the model we're working with. And as a DMO, you probably recognize this one. Uh, as a DMO, Visit Solana is also a DMO, so we do uh, a lot of social media stuff, and, and we work within this one. But this is also where the businesses need to be, because you have, the, during the visit, the experiences. That happens at the industry level. That's their job. But the industry also needs to take part of what happens when the, 
guests go back home. They bring memories, and you need to have a dialogue. So here we've been talking a lot about how we as DMOs can interact with the customers and have a good dialogue and so on. But we're focusing on how the businesses can have that dialogue and how they can do it well. Uh, because in the industry, in southern Norway, I don't know if it's like that here in the States, but in southern Norway, the industry was really afraid to get bad reviews. So that was, for some of them, a reason not to be on TripAdvice because they were really scared on the bad reviews. But we are now training them on how to respond to bad reviews and how to learn from the bad reviews. So we're doing training with the industry on how to be part of the guest management system, both on communicating with your customers after they're gone, what kind of memories they bring, and how to get them to come back and how to get them to recommend uh, your business to others. And then before the visit also, you, uh, people have dreams before they go on holiday, and the industry needs to take part of that dialogue online with their customers, not just when they're here. So we developed in the network uh, a set of uh, tools and methods on how to be handling all these um, challenges the industry are facing all the time, and that changes. So for us, it's very important to to focus on that this is not static, it's changing all the time. We have new stuff coming along all the way. So uh, a few of these things are, um, the first one is, there's always been like a saying in, uh, if you have a happy customer, she's satisfied, it's really great. But we're thinking like, okay, a satisfied customer, is that good enough? Does that really get them to uh, want to come back and tell others? So we're talking about the wow customer. That's what we're chasing, and that's what we need to develop. It's like when I go into the supermarket and I want to buy milk and bread, cornflakes, whatever, they do have it in the shop, and maybe the cashier even smiles at me, and I get the right change back and all of that. I'm happy, I'm satisfied, but it's not like I go on social media raving about how great it was going to the supermarket. And I think in the industry, there's been a lot of focus on, OK, as long as they're satisfied, we're, we're happy. But we need to get those wow customers that are so happy about or and so, so they get raving in social media about how great your industry is or your business is. And uh, so we, we have a special program on that. What does it take to create a wow customer? It's not, and, and what is the wow experience in your business? And we've had businesses sitting in workshops discussing what's our wow moment in our business, and they don't really have one. So that gets them thinking, okay, we need to create wow moments in our business. And then complaints. I told you about the TripAdvisor, very scared about getting bad reviews, so they're kind of staying away for a lot of, on a lot of social media platforms that try to kind of stay, stay out of it. Uh, but we say, well, complaints is really a good thing. Because if you don't be, if you're not being told if you're doing a bad job, how can you then improve? If but nobody tells you that you need, uh, maybe a, like my skirt is up here or something, how can I get it down? Uh, so, so that's very simple. We kind of train the industry on how to, to interact with the customers also when they have complaints. Uh, and then use those feedbacks in improving and also innovate in the industry. So, Want to be best in the industry is like everybody want to be best or number one. But then you need to use your customers in being that. You need to have a dialogue with them and actually ask them what they're thinking and what they think you should be doing in your business. So we have programs on that training the industry to think that way and how they can take it out. No, I'm swearing in Norwegian for you also. Mm. <laughs> I won't go into all of this, but it's just to show you how you built up the organization, because uh, the USUS project, there are no people that are, have a full-time job in the USUS project. Uh, we have decided to keep it very flexible and change-oriented, because in 2010, uh, the, the digital media landscape was totally different than it is today. So if we have one person who was an expert in 2010, uh, that person might not be what the industry need in 2015. So all of these, um, the first one is like we have the industry, it's very important for us to, to kind of get the grips, what, what does the industry need? So we have these key accounts, every, every business in the cluster or in the network has their own personal key account that has meetings. 
with the industry, interviewing them on what they need and how do they work and all of that. And in those meetings, we always bring the digital specialist because the digital specialist is the short-term results. All the businesses can take, have uh, takeaways on that. And I will tell a little bit more what the digital specialists do in those meetings in uh, a few. But then all of these programs is based on what the industry says they need. Like the CRM specialist, uh, we very soon discovered that very few of the businesses actually knew who their customer were. The hotels, of course, have a great system on that. But if you ask a museum or a festival uh, or uh, a small activity company, they don't really have any customer data. So they can't communicate with their customers after they've left the, the experience. So we needed to get uh, CRM into the thinking of the museums and stuff to see that maybe you should not do just uh, one size fits all communication. You need to segment. But being able to segment, you actually need to know what, what's your customer, where, where they're from, what do they like, and so on. And it's very hard for a museum because normally it's free in Norway, more or less, to go in there, or it costs a dollar, and uh, you just get a ticket at the door. You don't leave any traces. You don't know anything about the person who's been into the museum. So, but here we have like uh, all kind of different programs that we put up, and we every time we, we hire um, we hire different consultants that are experts on these areas, and if they don't deliver, or we see that the need uh, within the network is changing, we kick them out. So in in this way, we we have a change oriented organization model that always try to fit the needs of the business instead of the other way around, and I've been working in a DMO for many years, and I know in a, <laughs> for most of us, it's like we, we form the task we're doing in the DMO depending on what I like and what I know what to do, not the other way around. It's very hard to get rid of people that have been working in a DMO for 30 years, so they would probably, instead of evolving, they would still be doing the same thing they did 10 years ago. So we try to avoid that here. We try to kind of... Uh, not get stuck with the same people, but actually think of what kind of knowledge do we need. It was the wrong way. The digital toolbox. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go a bit into that since we're on a social media conference here. Uh, the digital toolbox is just uh, the title line. But it means that every business, when they join the network, they will get a um, uh, consultancy, uh, team coming out to the business where we run through all the uh, different social media platforms and see how the business is performing on the different one. And that's always been like the number one short term result because then the business actually get tips on how they're performing and where they can improve. And uh, there's been a lot of uh, uh, aha uh, moments in uh, the businesses, even the big ones that we really thought were head of their game. They, they didn't have ownership on Google+. Uh, they didn't know that people were blogging about them. Uh, so we gave, gave them kind of all the, the tools they need to kind of uh, get on track with their, with their business. Uh, so that's constantly evolving. So we have this one-to-one -one communication with one-on-one -on -one business. But we also then uh, make big workshops. If we see a lot of them has problems, they don't even know what Google Analytics is. We have a workshop on Google Analytics and teach them how to operate that. So uh, I don't know how I'm on time. I'm really bad with that. Yeah, OK, good. Uh, what's the results? And this is in Norwegian, so it's time to take up the um, Google Translate. Uh, but <laughs> it's like, how can you measure? Are we doing well or not? We've been doing surveys uh, trying to measure uh, the repeat visitation or the intention of wanting to come back. And uh, it shows that 9 out of 10 want to come back to Southern Norway. Really good. So we actually are right where we're supposed to be. But this year, uh, Innovation Norway, the National Tourist Board, they did a survey, a customer survey of all the visitors to Norway. And uh, this actually says, this is where the most happy tourists in Norway are. And that's in Southern Norway. So the customer survey to visit Norway actually proved that Southern Norway is where we have the most happy customers in Norway. Or most happy tourists. So we kind of feel we're on track here. This is like the, the final proof that we're going in the right direction. Uh, and then I will have a few takeaways at the end here. Doo -doo -doo. 
You might have seen this before if you checked any of my other presentations. But I think for us it's very important that we are no longer in charge of the marketing for a destination. I don't think we should be doing sale either. I mean, who in their right mind would leave their business sale to somebody else? The businesses in Southern Norway say, we want to do our own sale, but we need your help on providing information about the markets and analysis and so on, but you're not going to do the sale for my business. I'm going to do that myself. And I think that's very correct, and I'm really happy that I don't need to have a sales team out there. Customer experiences are key. You know that we've been talking about that all, uh, all the conference. Uh, and also, a few of you have mentioned that we need to be facilitators more than uh, the only way to the destination of Nashville, go through the destination Nashville Tourism Board. Uh, it's actually, we need to facilitate so the industry can do their best. They're the one doing the job. They're the one that needs to get money in and pay the bills. So we need to deliver our knowledge and expertise on what the industry needs. Sometimes the industry will tell us what they need, but very often we tell them also what they need. So it's, it has to be both. Okay, this is the last one I have. Management is key. And I think, oh, I'm, I'm a bit surprised when I'm on these conferences and there is not many managers here or CEO or whatever you call it here. And it's mostly like you have a big organization like San Francisco, a lot of people working there and one on social media. And I'm thinking, how can that be? Uh, and uh, I think as a DMO, you, don't, you can't pretend to be social. Everybody working in the DMO needs to be social. They need to be out there. Uh, and I need also to have um, the knowledge to be actually a good advisor for the industry. And to be a good advisor, you have to be out there, you have to try things. 2010, I was really big on Gubala. Anybody else on Gubala? Nah, nobody heard of it anymore. Really, really, I, I really liked Gubala, but now it's out. Uh, it doesn't exist anymore. But our job as a DMO, we're testing stuff. So we can tell the industry, go there, don't go there, and so on. And then we need to be out there. We do a lot of crazy stuff and testing uh, all kinds of new things coming up just to see if there is a marketing potential there for the industry. These days we're looking into Snapchat to see, well, okay, there is a lot of people, all young people in Norway are on Snapchat. There might not be a marketing arena for a, a business there, but we need to be out there and test it for them. Uh, we need to listen to the industry. What do they need us to do? I mean, we, can't, we, can possibly, we need to be there for the industry, first and foremost, not for the board. And I was a bit surprised also about the board. There's a lot of talk about the board doesn't want to do this and that. If the industry says, we need that, then the board should say, OK, that's what you're going to do. There shouldn't be a mix between that. And the last one uh, that I hope will be the theme for another conference, all of this uh, makes it necessary to develop new business models because the old business model that most of you are probably still running on, and even us, is that you, you run marketing campaign and you sell that to the industry. Do you want to join this campaign and it will cost you this much? Suddenly we're doing stuff that we can't really show. It's like if we have a, an online advertisement campaign, we can't really show it to the industry because it's in the market, uh, it's on at four o'clock just for families living in uh, another town on that local paper. So it's very hard for us to document what we're really doing. Uh, and when we're selling knowledge, what we provide for the industry is knowledge and expertise. Um, the old business model doesn't really fit anymore. So I think that's what we are the biggest challenge we have at the moment is we need a new business model to fit with the new landscape we're working with. And uh, flexible and change oriented, it must be in your DNA. Beforehand, uh, in sort of Norway, it was like if the tourist office had been stable for 10, 15, 20 years, no fuss about it, then it was success. The same people had been working there, everything like it's going okay. Uh, that was the success formula. I think we need now to see yes, the DMO changing maybe every second year, every third year. That's the new success formula. And then we need a politician on board understanding that we as an organization need to be constantly changing. And that's not a sign of, uh, of uh, uh, not being on track. It's actually a sign of being on track. So next year, Visit Solana might not be around anymore because we're changing everything again. 
uh, and uh, I could be sitting in a corner being very afraid of that, but I'm thinking we need to be changing. We've been doing the same model for four years. Now it's time to take a step in the ground again, or whatever you say in English, and, and see, are we still doing the right thing? Uh, and then we need to change again. And I think that was it. A really nice picture in the end here. That's me. Yeah. <laughs>